that's a good question. In fact, I was codenamed Major General Prithviraj during the explosion. I should say that the testing was a defining moment in the country's history. I should say that I should say that the testing was a defining moment in the country's history. And politically, because people tend to respect those who are strong. And what do you emphasize for India in 2014? The race towards sustainable development has started worldwide. India has also taken it up in a true spirit. I can see an economically developed India which has not compromised the quality of its environment. Remember, remember that India stands for, for globally in renewable energy production, solar power capacity and wind power capacity, thus making, thus making a leap in the use of green energy. The way to the top position is not far off. The development of our nation rests in your hands. Proclaim India as a highly developed nation, not a developing one. Ask what we can do for India and do what has to be done to make India what America and other countries are today. Maybe you, you or you might spearhead the programs that might raise India to the position of the most developed country in the world. Let this meeting here be the, pro Let this meeting here be the launch pad for further researches and investigations. May you fulfill a vision of a free, strong, and a developed India in the coming year. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Certainly, quantum mechanics is the world of the very small. It describes the behavior of nature at and below the scale of atoms. It's also needed to explain some macroscopic phenomena such as superconductors and superfluids. That sounds intelligible to a layman. By the way, why did Adolf Hitler call you a white Jew? Oh, there was a lot of pressure from Hitler to construct the atom bomb. It was almost around the same time that the Manhattan Project was in operation. Knowing about its implications, I flatly refused to abide by Hitler's orders. This infuriated him and he called me a white Jew. But then, I tried making an atomic pile to produce energy. That was a real bold step, sir. Something that points out that you're peace-loving nature. That brings us to the end of the scientist man stage. Now, one question remains. A question that might have risen in many heads in front of me. Do the Indian scientists not have a role to play in the field of nuclear? for science and used to build my own models. I was forced to go take mechanical engineering at the Cambridge University by my father and uncle who wanted me to be an industrialist. I wrote to my father that I was burning with the desire to do physics and that making me continue mechanical engineering was like asking Beethoven to become a scientist or Socrates to be an engineer. Finally, my father succumbed to my pressure. It was while I was working at the Cavendish laboratory and I started focusing on theoretical physics. You had an entirely different perspective regarding the use of nuclear energy. Yes, I believe that nuclear energy could be used for peace and not for destruction. I wanted competent workers on nuclear energy to be brought under one umbrella so that they can be given training in their field of expertise. This, in turn, could help to unleash nuclear energy for power production and in two decades, the energy crisis in India can be solved. What for thinking? You are indeed a visionary. I am sure at the rate at which India is moving in the nuclear field. It will not be long before we make your dream a reality. Thank you so much, sir, for enlightening us. Now, here comes the missile man of India, who as the originator of the quantum theory, which revolutionized the understanding of the atomic and subatomic processes. Can you elaborate on the plan postulate E equal to H new? 
Initially, it was just a formal assumption about which I did not know much. At first, I was interested in thermodynamics. Later, problems on radiation process caught my attention and I showed that these were to be considered as electromagnetic in nature. Was this how you arrived at the important parsley which was a landmark in the history of physics? Yes, I deduced the relationship between energy and frequency based on the revolutionary idea that the energy emitted by a resonator could only take on discrete values or quanta. The energy for a resonator of frequency nu is h nu, where h is a universal constant now called Planck's constant. And thus the formula E is equal to h nu was born. You break up. Things are getting clearer for me now. Thanks a million, Mr. Planck, for the transmission of knowledge. I too my gratitude to Mr. Planck. In fact, his discovery had helped me in my research for the photoelectric effect. Oh, the mutual help between two geniuses put together, that sounds astounding. Now, next in the list is Sir Robert Oppenheimer. <laughs> so, you are the first to ask, the father of atomic bomb. Can you throw some light on how you got this title? I don't know whether to be happy or sad about the title conferred on me. Anyway, I will let you know about the details. I was recruited as a scientific director of the Manhattan Project, which is the United States government's secret World War II undertaking to build an atomic bomb. In early 1943, construction of the bomb began in Los Alamos Laboratory in New Mexico. A group of top scientists of the time assembled to live and work until the bomb had been completed. Less than three years, after the laboratory's founding, the world's first nuclear weapons test, known as the Trinity Test, was conducted. Three weeks later, on August 9, 6 and 9 respectively, two atomic bombs were detonated over the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. How did you feel about the destruction caused by the bombs? Please don't remind me about it. It's still a nightmare to me. Thousands of civilians were killed and aftermath of the same is still visible. The same year in October, when I met the President Harry S. Truman, I told him that I had blood in my hands. In fact, I staunchly opposed the development of a hydrogen bomb, a super bomb which is thousand times more powerful than the atom bomb. Hey Oppenheimer, do you remember our meeting saying where you were presented with the AAC's highest honor, the Enrico Fermi Award? How can I forget? Your presence there was a greater honor than the award itself.
Dear Mr. Einstein, you are still remembered for your world famous formula which describes the relationship between mass and energy. E equal to mc square. Can you explain it in a simple way so that all of us here can understand? Here, E stands for energy and for mass and C for the speed of light in vacuum. Coming to relativity, I will explain it by taking an example from real life. When you sit with a nice girl for two minutes, it seems like two hours. When you sit on a hot stove for two minutes, it seems like two hours. That's relativity. It's as simple as that. <laughs>